Okay, so I've got a collection of Raspberry Pi 5s here uh, from 4 gig models, 8 gig models and also a 16 gig model here. But this 16 gig model shares something in common with these two items, so the Pi 500 and the Compute Module 5. And that's because Raspberry Pi 5s use this chip. You can see the last three digits contain a C in it. Whereas this Compute Module 5 has a D in the last three digits. And we can see here that the original Raspberry Pi 5 announcement was 28th of September 2023 and we had 4 gig and 8 gig variants. But then nearly a year later, August 2024, we had the Pi 5 2 gig variant and that's when they announced the optimised D0 stepping of the BCM2712. BCM2712 C1 is a hugely complex and powerful device with a quad core ARM Cortex A76. And it says, alongside the features required to power Raspberry Pi, it also contains functionality intended to serve other markets, which we don't need. This dark silicon is permanently disabled in the chips we use, but takes up die space and therefore adds cost. The new D0 stepping strips away all that unneeded functionality, leaving only the bits we need from the perspective of a Raspberry Pi user. It is functionally identical to its predecessor, the same fast quad-core processor, the same multimedia capabilities and the same PCI Express. But this process allowed them to take $10 off the cost of the finished product. We recently had the Compute Module 5 on the 27th of November, which also uses the same D0 chip, as does the Pi 500. And the most recent 16 gig model, the optimized D0 stepping of the Broadcom processor includes support for memories larger than 8 gigabytes. So this is great news and uh, it looks like all the 4 gig and 8 gig Pi 5s will also have the D0 processor. But compatibility hasn't been 100%, so uh, this works fine. This is uh, KDE Plasma built on Raspberry Pi OS. Most other Linux distributions seem to work absolutely fine. This is what happens when you try and boot Windows 11 on a 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5. So it recognizes UEFI boot, but it doesn't allow any keyboard control. The graphics are very weird, and even this is after a little tweak, but it doesn't recognize the operating system, which is on this USB stick. But if I shut this down, I've transferred everything over to my 8 gig Pi. It starts to boot in the normal way and we have Windows. And it's a shame because 16 gig would have really benefited Windows more than anything really. So let's shut that down. And I've got another operating system on here. This is Fido S, which is uh, like you get on a Chromebook, very similar. I've got other videos on it. So if I start that up, still on the 8 gig variant, Fido S starts to load. And I think if I give it an internet connection, I change my wallpaper on another unit I use Fido S on, so it'll probably update itself. Oh, there you go, so it's updated its wallpaper. Um, and I've spoken to Alpha from Fido S, he's working on a fix for the Pi 500, and I've told him about the CM5 and also the 16 gig variant. I didn't mention the 2 gig models, uh, but I guess once that fix is in place, so he's saying it needs the new kernel, then it'll probably work across the board. And I've also had a comment from John Elmer uh, saying that the latest Ubuntu 24.04.1 doesn't work on the 16 gig Pi 5, but does work on the 8 gig. So all this software will need to be updated. The only issue is that with Windows, the UEFI boot, so if I type in UEFI Pi 5, hasn't been updated since March last year. So this is the latest release, let March 16th. And it is in the issues, but it doesn't look like it's been fixed yet. 18 gig. Or oh, is another, so a newer one here, look, 11 minutes ago. And they've done the fix that gets some graphical user interface, but it doesn't go any further than that. So fingers crossed for Windows, but Fido S should be on the way. And I don't know about Ubuntu, so maybe I try Ubuntu because we had some new firmware today. So if we type in Raspberry Pi EEPROM and go to their GitHub, today's version has all these fixes. So 22nd of the first, and there were some things about the 60, yeah, improve SD RAM refresh timings and a few other things in there. So let's close that down. And also if I just show you my EEPROM, so if I do RPI EEPROM update without sudo, you can see that it tells you what version it's on. So let's go to imager. I'm gonna pop an SD card in and do choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS, other general purpose, Ubuntu, yeah, this was the one, look, 24.4.1. So choose storage, 
that's my SD card. It's in a USB adapter, that's why it says USB mass storage, because I'm running the OS from an SD card. So arrays, and come back when that's all done. Okay, so let's see if it works with the new firmware update. So I'm gonna shut this down and boot it up from that SD card. Okay, so far so good. That color doesn't look very Ubuntu. Yeah, that's taking too long. So let's try Control alt f 4 Is that the one that quits you out to terminal? Yeah, Ubuntu and Ubuntu usually, <laughs> but it's not this time. I don't know the password, so I'm gonna turn it off and on again. I had the same result. So I'm gonna try the four gig Pi. Yeah, it's gone straight into it. I'll do the setup and let it boot all the way through and see if just doing an update fixes it. So there's some updates to do that may fix it. Uh, we do have the DTB files for the D variant of the 2712 and it's the Raspberry Pi 5 one. Whether it needs to be different for the 16 gig model, which I could get from Raspberry Pi OS, but I think what I'll do is update first to see if that fixes it. And unfortunately it didn't, we still have a green screen. Okay, so I'm back in KDE Plasma and I've just plugged in the SD card for Ubuntu. So you can see here, system boot. So these are the boot files. And if I use this system, so if I right click and open a new window, so this is the operating system I'm using. And in firmware, we have all the similar files. So I've already grabbed those and put them on the desktop. So I'm just gonna try some of these. So I've got the D variant here. So I'm just gonna grab these three because they worked for Twister OS on the Pi 500 and also Pi Mega as well. So let's grab those and drag them in. And I'm just gonna overwrite. I don't know if this is gonna work but it's worth a try. So let's shut down and try and boot Ubuntu with those three files in place. It does this every time and then it goes green if it's not gonna work. It doesn't look like it's gonna work. So I've just tried Control or F4. I'm gonna see if I can log in again. Oh, okay, so it's let me in like this. So if I try Start X, Okay, could not resolve keys, current operating system. What if we try sudo apt install kde dash plasma dash desktop? I think that's the right one. I spelt plasma with an E. Following packages have unmet dependencies. sudo apt install task cell. And yes, so sudo task cell, okay. So we could try GNOME and see what it does, because that's what it would be using anyway. Yeah, let's give it a go. So tab down and okay. Well, it's attempting to do it. Okay, so it looks like it's installed. Let's just do reboot and see if it lets us get to the login. So control or F4. And let's log in again. And let's try start X. Okay, definitely doesn't like that. Let's try a lightweight desktop environment like XFCE. See, we might be all right with this because it's trying to put a display manager in there. So let's try light DM. I guess that's finished. Let's try, right, I'm gonna try rebooting. Oh, and we're in. <laughs> <laughs> well, something's made it work. 24.04 LTS, mind you, that is uh, just a background. Oh, I can click on the PSP video. That's so weird. So yeah, it's working. So do I have NeoFetch? No, so let's install that. That one is. So let's see if that launches, yeah. So 24.04, kernel 6.8.0, GNOME, window manager, Mutter. Seems to be working, it's detected my 16 gig of RAM. I guess you could go into task cell and then delete the uh, XFCE desktop environment. What happens if I log out? So power and log out. 
So now if we tap on this, we get the <laughs> we've got a few variants here, XFCE, Noman Wayland. Wow. So let's see if Noman Wayland works. Well, we seem to be working. So it was kind of a fix, not sure which step actually did it, but I'm happy to see it working. And this is something we didn't encounter with the Raspberry Pi 4 and then the Raspberry Pi 400 came out and the Compute Module 4. They all worked on the same software pretty much. I think Compute Module 4 would be different depending on what boards you had. We didn't have that change of processor across those three models. And I contacted the Raspberry Pi team about older things not working on these D variant processors and they do need an update. So whoever makes the software, so FidoS is already working on it and obviously other versions of software will need to be updated to support these new chips. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.